Hello fellow Helldivers, it's good to see you back. Quick question to you all, what is better than one laser weapon? Well, three, as three is the magic number that can both destroy all enemies and also destroy your teammates if you're lucky. Jokes aside, a triple laser builds are something worth experimenting in Helldivers 2 as they have near infinite ammo but still requires patience when using them. If you enjoy messing around with questionable builds, then now is the time to up your armory through this simple loadout. So, starting with the loadout, we are running the following. Weapons, a last 16 sickle, or last 5 scythe. Secondary, last 7 dagger. Grenades, high explosives. Armor, a DP-40, Hero of the Federation. And booster, any. For weapons, we are limited in what laser weaponry we can use, as primary only has 3 options to pick. I have chosen the last 16 sickle for the primary, as it deals effectively well against both automatrons and bugs on whatever difficulty I play on. Its good damage, paired with effective range, allows us to engage at a smart distance, while also providing good accuracy fire to pin down enemy weak points. As is an energy weapon, you won't need to auto reload weapon unless it overheats, which is something that can be easily managed over time and prevented. It's the best all rounder primary to use currently and will survive even the worst situation thrown at you. However, the weapon does require the cutting edge war bomb for it to be fully unusable. You can use the last 5 scythe instead, which is more like a continuous beam, similar to a laser cannon, but it lacks the damage compared to the latter, and maybe best you stick with the main primary weapon we will start with. I followed this up with the last 7 dagger, which is another cutting edge weapon. It's okay to use, with its ability to not require reloading so much, you can use this on and off like everyone else. Its damage is debatable though, and is more designed for taking out smaller minor enemies while running, instead of taking on the more bigger enemies you may see. Armor, I've chosen the Hero of the Federation set for the 50% chance of surviving lethal hits. The following is great as an all round kit for all enemy types, which fits the build perfectly, and quite honestly you can go with whatever armor set you want, as it doesn't really affect the loadout too much. So since my loadout focuses solely on laser weapon, it makes sense for us to use laser based gear available as stratagems. Orbital laser excels best when dealing with armored units who require much more hard hitting stratagems to be taken out with. A using this against a Hulk or Bio Titan will either kill or severely weaken them to the point of being easily mopped up through other powerful stratagems. Eagle Airstrike allows a more powerful and precise bombing run on targets. It has a relatively short cooldown, around 2 to 3 uses per cooldown, and is capable of inflicting high damage against medium to large armor if aimed correctly. This is a perfect strategy in the run with Orbital Laser, as against a Bio Titan, for example, the two combos should be enough to kill it in one go, depending on difficulty and weakness. The Laser Cannon is similar to the last 5 Scythe, although in a bigger form. Strategically, it's good for taking out large structures from distance and also good with inflicting continuous damage against all sorts of enemies' weak points. It has a cooldown attached to it, so I would say use this more like a secondary primary in hand, and the damage they will both do will add up down the line. The Laser Guard Dog is perfect as a backup weapon designed for providing extra support to fire while against everything on the ground. Reliable and handy to use with your primaries, the follower make it quite easy to run harder tiers when facing is a unstoppable group and lack of ammo on your side. And then lastly, the Quasar Cannon is a newly added support weapon designed for taking out larger threats in one or few blasts. Similar to how laser based weapons work, the following requires users to charge before firing, and upon successfully hitting the target, it will outright weaken the target or destroy it. Recommended to bring this if you ever go on a mission that requires taking out large VIP targets. The loadout plays how you will expect all laser based builds will play pure continuous firepower that's hard to stop. With the Guard Dog, Sickle, and Quasar Cannon on hand, you can deal with 95% of the forces you face in whatever tiers you choose to do all thanks to how the weapon cooldown system works. Your primary, secondary and heavy stratagem all have a heat cooldown attached to them, which will overheat if overused too long. If it overheats, then you need to reload it to restart it again, but if you don't overheat, then you won't need to reload it, but instead wait for it to have a cooldown. 
This is a huge advantage when using this set, as the moment one weapon starts to overheat, you can easily switch to the next best thing and repeat until your weapons have cooled down. This will provide a near infinite source of energy when dealing with all sorts of enemies one by one. A good example can be using your main primary to deal with the minor enemies on hand, like normal, until you face a blue commander or charger. At that point, you can dump a few rounds into them, switch to your laser cannon or quasar cannon, and then finish them off nice and easily. Such a move is both handy and powerful when facing multiple types of enemies on the hand, and you don't want to use your orbital stratagem to deal with them instead. Of course, when facing the more bigger threats, that's when your orbital laser, eagle airstrike, and quasar cannon comes into play. There are some caveats with the loadout, such as overheating, high cooldown time, and lack of orbital laser after use. Overheating can be countered by monitoring your heat level and slowing down. High cooldown time for lasers and cannons usage can be countered by only using them when you really need to, and just playing it smart overall. And of course, mission effects can affect these as well, but as long as you play it smart, you can always adapt. It's an unusual but fun loadout to mess around with. The following setup can be used and adapted to whatever difficulty of level or mission you have in mind. Its great strength with providing non-stop firepower allows players to engage any front they may be on, but also being fun to mess around with in general. I highly recommend you give this a try, if you're looking to experiment with different loadouts on each mission. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the video loadout. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content, then leave a like and a sub while here. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.